We're starting now to get some reports back of second malignancies in children who had bone marrow transplants, which cured their first malignancy. People talk about battling cancer, but battles leave emotional scars too. When we played the tape of her story for Naomi and her boyfriend Steve Hurst, there was only one memory she couldn't stand. The most, I think the hardest part for me was um, at the very end when I was talking about my friends who passed away. When Naomi's best friend was diagnosed with a brain tumor, she knew what her friend was facing. This is the scream that she drew she was feeling inside. She was gonna have a spinal tap done. Just the smells of the antibiotics were just, I think it's more that kind of stuff that brings back memories for me personally, um, like my personal experience, but for my friends, like you're there, you watch them go through this stuff. It's pretty horrible. Okay, lie down, Johnny. <coughs> lie down. Wait, are you ready now? Thousands of children go through this every year. It's that or die. Johnny Giorgio is 23 months old, and Sick Children's Hospital is treating him for a very aggressive brain tumor, the same kind Andrew and Jill Sprosson had. You ready? That's a boy. You look at ready? daddy, okay? One. The cure is still painful, and to a child, it must feel a dreadful betrayal of trust. Your parents are bringing you in to be hurt over and over and over again, and the world is no longer a safe place, and you're scared and you feel sick for a long time, and that's very devastating for a lot of children. And it takes a, a long time to trust people, I guess, and so, I don't know, that's difficult, knowing that through something like this, you don't gain trust in people, you actually lose trust in people. Yeah! A dying child can split a family apart. This one grew stronger, perhaps because not only did they have to fight disease, but also ignorance. People were just cruel. They um, took all my clothes when I was in the hospital and put them in garbage bags and told my mom to get her head out of the sand, I'm gonna die. Her brother Nathan, whose bone marrow had saved her life, carries deep inside the fear that one day he will lose her for good. Surviving so much pain built a deep and unbreakable bond between Naomi and Nathan. But eventually, the stress took its toll on the rest of the family. Their parents divorced. Nathan left the family in his early teens to study violin and grew apart. He and all of them live with the sense that life is uncertain, the future not to be trusted. Worth one and a half million, I think. When Naomi was diagnosed, Ruth says she couldn't pray or read or put two sentences together. She didn't dare dream of a future. Everything went into saving her daughter. Do you remember when you did that concert with the London yeah. Now, as they wander through Harbourfront on their last day together in Toronto, the love between the two is so strong you feel you could touch it. It's amazing. Ah, that is so neat. It looks like your size cake. You could wear it tonight. Cancer turned Ruth into a determined advocate for the survivors. She knows one of the biggest obstacles to them getting what they need lies in themselves. They want to believe they're well, and they're so grateful to be alive, they don't want to make a fuss. I think that just because we're happy to be here, we don't really stand up and, and say, you know, here, there's a problem here. And I think we need to do that effectively and maybe not become bitter, but we definitely need to get some better system set up in the health care. No. Slowly, things are changing. Because they've learned from the survivors, Dr. Mark Greenberg can tell Johnny Giorgio's parents the price his treatment will exact. He can offer them a form of radiation he believes will be far less damaging to Johnny's brain. Good. Can I see the other one? Thank you. Oh. And he's led a lengthy push for a system of clinics to deal with both physical and psychological long-term okay. effects. Now you know what I need you to do. I need you to walk for me. When you walk. The plan is that children like Johnny would be automatically followed all their lives. But their doctors think of the older survivors and wish they knew then what they know now. We all begin with the hope, with every child cure will not be 
costly in terms of the child. Um, there's something called the retrospectoscope. So, I mean, it allows you to look backwards and say, gee, I wonder why I did that. Um, the retrospectoscope's a, a very upsetting instrument when you look at long-term survivors sometimes. What I would like now is a moment of silence. At the end of the Candlelighters Conference, everyone lights a flame to remember those who didn't survive. Those who did, like Andrew Sprossen, the man who had the brain tumor, feel blessed to be alive. But the lives they fought for are often fragile, at risk, and sometimes lonely. Like many survivors, Naomi now wants to dedicate her life to helping others through medicine or science. She's doing a degree in biology and working in a medical research lab in Ottawa. But one question haunts her. Who would you be if you weren't a cancer survivor? Um, it's funny, sometimes I wake up and I wonder, you know, what I would have been. But just maybe not knowing is the biggest thing that I've lost. Is she cured? <laughs> yes. Um, she's cured of her original diagnosis of cancer. Are we completely healed? No. did sit down at the piano and picked out the notes of the church song she hadn't played since the day Naomi was diagnosed. And hearing her, Nathan picked up his violin. This is the first time mother and son have played together in 13 years. Cancer went off like a bomb in this family. All of them are now survivors. For The National, I'm Eve Savory in Kensington, Maryland.